talk about the outlook right now. If you've got a dovish Fed and you've got a president that's trying to get through tax reform, health care reform, and infrastructure spending, what does that mean for market outlook? Financial analyst Heather Zumaraga, along with uh, we have a Cerverist Wealth Management CEO Robert Luna and our own Nicole Petalides. I'm starting with you, Nicole, down on the floor there. What do you keep hearing? Well, they're watching everything that Janet Yellen has been saying. The message from the Fed has been consistent. We know that they're going to, yesterday we got those headlines, the gradual increase will continue. We're watching inflation closely, but also one part of it, too, was fiscal policy. And she really is keeping a close eye on what to expect out of Washington, because you really have to have monetary policy and fiscal policy working together. Now, we know that this market has run up on a great business-friendly agenda from President Trump and his administration. The question now is when it will go through. I will note that most traders on Wall Street still think everything is on track and will happen. The optimism is still there. While there may be I love the optimism. This, this I love still it. There. It doesn't and matter, you know, Don Jr. emails, uh, you know, controversy over North whether Korea. or not the health care situation is going to get resolved. They remain optimistic. I think it's a great sign, actually. It's part of what makes us great. It is part of, it is an intrinsic part. Heather, of who we are as a nation, we are always willing to look at the glass half full. And nobody wants to miss out on any kind of potential upside down the road. But let me ask you, if you don't get these policies through, if you don't see health care reform soon, if you don't see tax reform this year, what does that do to the upside we've built in this market? That will pose a problem for the markets, Trish. Uh, we're all waiting to see some more clarity out of the fiscal side in Washington. I know that the Fed's testimony today and yesterday was important for the markets to lift to uh, even perhaps today we hit another all-time high. But Janet Yellen has said time and time again, listen, to reach the growth target, the GDP target of 3% and higher, we need tax reform. Uh, we need to cut back on spending. Those are just the realities. The realities indeed. Um, all right, Robert, how does the Fed unwind its balance sheet, especially in light of her being so dovish? Well, that's the biggest challenge, I think, Trish. And I think the, the Fed keeps looking at this inflation number, and it's stubbornly low. And when you look at companies out there like Amazon with their latest acquisition of Whole Foods, I think that's going to be a challenge for them for some time to come. Um, so I think, you know, anytime you get this pullback in the market, you're seeing investors rush back in. But, you know, I have to say there's places to invest outside of the U.S. And I think for the average investor in their 401K, the average retiree out there, they really haven't participated in this run as great as we've seen from the S&P 500. If you look at Europe, emerging markets, they're up basically 50, 60 percent over the last year, while the S&P is up 170 percent. So the average investor is finally starting to participate in this rally in their Good. 401k. Good. So there's a lot more optimism. That means, out there, which it means I there's think a lot more room for this to run. Hey, very quickly, can we show this graphic again? I want people to see this wage growth versus wage. Do we have that wage growth versus price inflation? So you see, I believe in the yellow, you've got uh, wages. And then you see price inflation, uh, which is basically kind of going nowhere. That's in blue. Mm -hmm. The real problem, however, is that, you know, we're, we're not making any more money. And, and that, Heather, you know, I do think for, for Donald Trump, if he wants another term, to get another term, that has to start to change. You need hey. to see American wages go up. I'm all in favor of a pay increase. I'm sure we all want our paychecks to rise. Right. But the fact that on that chart you showed that prices are coming down as effect of the disruptive forces of e-commerce, mm -hmm. that in itself can be seen as an indirect uh, perhaps wage increase because we're paying less for the goods yeah, and services fair. that we that's have to fair. buy. And it's just kind of depressing balancing. when everything's going uh, yeah. down. <laughs> How yeah, they unwind I agree. the balance sheet will be a very how they unwind that balance sheet is going to be a very big deal because there are some people who are concerned on how they will do that. And that could even mean no rate hike. We'll see. But they have to do a very careful way of doing that. Yeah, uh, yes. let's see what happens to Yellen. I okay, mean how long thank, does she stand for? Yeah, that's right. We don't know if she's gonna make it. Uh thanks to the whole team.